my name is Russ Isabella. I uh, teach a sports photography class for the Brian Peterson School of Photography. And today I am going to be critiquing five photos that were submitted for critique. This first photo was sent in by Nikki Decourt. And Nikki was at the top of the Empire State Building looking for something unique, something interesting, something out of the ordinary. And um, according to the information Nikki provided, devoted a lot of time for looking, a lot of time to looking for just that kind of unique photo opportunity. And in this mirrored passageway, noticed that many people, particularly women, took time to look at their reflections in the mirrors. And so decided this would be a good place to try to grab a photo and eventually captured this one. And um, Nikki says that he loves this particular photo primarily because of how much time went into it, uh, preparing, waiting, looking for just the right moment. So the backstory, um, information that of course is meaningful to the photographer and not available to the person viewing the image without that backstory being provided. This photo was taken with a 5D Mark II and a 24 to 105 lens all Canon equipment um, at 70 millimeters, F 5.0, 1 400th shutter speed, ISO 250. So as I look at this photo, um, one of the first things I notice which were also mentioned in Nikki's comments, are the distractions. If we look in the background here, we see this man in the bright blue shirt whose reflection is also evident. This uh, other person with a camera who's kind of cut in half by the mirror, these people here, and this woman bending over uh, very close to the, to the head of our primary subject. So those are distractions. And, you know, I believe Nikki, uh, in terms of the difficulty in a crowded public tourist attraction, it's going to be difficult to find a space with no distractions. And what, one of the things I'm wondering is whether moving to the left here and focusing a bit more on the reflection might help to eliminate some of these distractions in the upper left uh, quadrant of the frame. Another thing that's interesting to me is that when I first saw the image, I thought airport. I thought this is a person who's looking out a window, um, saying goodbye to someone or um, waiting to say goodbye or perhaps waiting for someone to arrive. It, it, it didn't really occur to me that this was a young girl looking at her reflection in a mirror. And so um, that, it's another example of information that the photographer has that is perhaps not coming through clearly through the photo. But one of the things that I think could possibly strengthen this photo would be to crop it and to bring the viewer more closely into what I understand to be the most important part of the image, which is this young girl looking at her reflection. And so a crop like this, which of course I don't have <clears throat> the kind of resolution I would need for this to look as good as it could look from the the image I'm working with, but hopefully Nikki has a, um, a raw original to work from to do something like this. Now this accomplishes a lot of things for me. For one thing, it makes very clear that um, this girl may very well be looking at her reflection. And it helps to eliminate some of the distractions in the background as well. They're still there, but I think that the frame is taken up so much more by the primary subject that those distractions are not as evident and not so um, distracting. We've completely lost the one photographer. We've lost most of this person and we probably could lose more with a slightly tighter crop. But what I'm most interested in is this being, being brought much more closely into this connection between the girl and her reflection. So that would be my um, primary bit of advice for this particular image. I think it's got a lot of strengths. I think it's fantastic that uh, Nikki took the time, took the energy, had a vision, waited to, to see something that fit that vision, and then went ahead and took the best photo that could be taken. Um, and so my ideas are for 
perhaps making the presentation of that photo a bit stronger. Now, thank you for submitting this photo. This next image was submitted by Elizabeth Hogg, and it's entitled Flamingo. And the uh, photo was taken with a Sony ILCE 6300E in an 18 to 200 millimeter lens at uh, f6.3, 1 320th of a second at ISO 640. And Elizabeth says that uh, what she likes about the photo are the color and the simplicity of the lines. And I would have to agree, I, I think this is a very stunning image that I like very much. I like the fact that it's both abstract and, and quite literal. So clearly it's a flamingo. We can see the details, uh, particularly in the, the facial area, the eye, the beak, snout, or whatever that's called, the head, the neck. Um, we have no doubt what this is, but the fact that we're seeing only a small portion of this animal, the um, a part of one leg, the neck, the head, um, and that it's so colorful set against the different, quite different and uh, strikingly contrasting colors of the water make it somewhat abstract. It, it, it can be about only the color and the lines, or it can be about the subject itself, in this case, the flamingo. So um, yeah, this is a very strong image. I like it very much. I like that there seems to be almost a pattern that is visible in the water itself that is really lending strength to setting the flamingo apart from the background, even though this is shot at f6.3, and I think that probably was um, about the maximum aperture that the lens afforded. We're still getting great separation of the subject from the background, most likely because of the nature of that background. So we have these wonderfully muted greens and yellows and very um, light orange in the back. And then we have this gorgeous red orange neck and head of the flamingo. Uh, as I look at the photo, I really don't see any ways that I would think to change it to improve it. I think it's just fantastic as it is. The, you know, the flamingo might be just a little dark and might consider lightening that up a little. Um, I looked at that a bit and in, let's see here, if I go into levels and work with the midtones and brighten that a bit and then darken the, the blacks, um, I'm not sure that really, that's again back to the original and here with the changes that I've made. I don't know that that really does anything at all. Um, I'm stretching, looking for advice when I really don't think any is warranted. This is a terrific photo. Thank you for submitting it, and uh, I'm sure it would look fantastic framed on a wall as a beautiful piece of art. This photo was submitted by Mohammed Owais Khan and it's entitled Writer, and there was no additional information provided. Uh, when I look at the photo, what the things I like about it are that um, obviously Mohammed uh, was panning at the time the photo was taking, taken, meaning that he was following the rider with his camera, moving uh, from right to left, and thus we see that the background is blurred as a result of that movement, but the horse and the rider are in fairly sharp focus by contrast. So that's a nice effect. It's um, one of many ways to try to separate the subject from the background, and it has worked well here. A few issues that I see with the photo, uh, primarily, I think the most obvious is that based on Muhammad's position at the time he took the photo, he didn't have full access to the track. And so we see this great uh, distraction of people in the foreground who are blocking our view of the horse's, much of the horse's legs and feet. And um, it really detracts from the overall effect of the photo, in my opinion, unless 
the goal is to show that indeed there was a crowd at this horse race. So if, if the goal is a uh, straight action photo of this horse and rider, or even of the race, then this distraction is somewhat problematic. The other thing is that this photo screams to me uh, for a horizontal rather than a vertical crop. Everything that's happening is happening from this right side of the frame to the left side of the frame. And it's nice that we have a little space for this horse to quote unquote run into that contributes to the feeling of motion. But um, I've gone ahead and cropped the image. And to give an idea of what I mean, we eliminate a good part of the distraction here by cutting out the bottom portion. Uh, we cut out a top portion. And we, in my view, bring the viewer of the photo more intimately into the photo. Again, I don't have the resolution for this to look very good at this size, but this allows us to see that we really have a photo of a horse and rider here. Now, um, once I've done that, what I notice is that the horizon does not appear to be level. And we have a vertical line here that we can look at, and we have a horizontal line here. And so my first effort to straighten this, um, you know, I was thinking I might be straightening it here. It's still looks as though the horse is running uphill a little bit. And so I went a little further and uh, maybe too far, hard to say. But this is probably where I would leave it. So we have a horizontal crop. We are focused almost exclusively on the horse and rider. We've straightened the horizon so it looks as though the horse is running on a level track, which I'm going to assume it was. And um, those would be the suggestions that I would have. That I, I'll say again that the, the panning was well done and effective in that we have blurred. Everything is blurred except for the subjects of the photo. I recommend a horizontal crop. And in terms of how one straightens an image, if we go and, and use the crop tool, you see that as we start to um, change our crop, there's this grid that overlays the image. And if we get to the point where we are we get the little curved arrow that says we're rotating the crop. We see that these uh, the grid lines allow us to work either from this rail or this post to say, all right, well, we want to get one of these horizontal lines perfectly even with the bottom or the top, wherever the line happens to fall. And when we are there, then we crop, and now we have um, a level image. So nice work. Um, if you agree with me, then I suggest you go ahead and crop it horizontally. And I thank you for submitting the photo. This next photo was submitted by Richard Rossi, and it is entitled Fear. It was taken with a Nikon D750 and a 24 to 70 millimeter lens at 70 millimeters. F2.8, uh, 1 125th of a second shutter speed, and ISO 200. The photo was taken in an abandoned warehouse. Now, I've uh, looked at this photo many times, and I, I certainly am going to share impressions with you about um, how I see the photo and what I see and what it makes me think and what it makes me feel, but I, I can't really say that I'll be able to organize those in, in the form of any kind of specific recommendations. So the first thing I'll say is that I really like the black and white treatment. I think it's done very well. And um, the makeup, hair, dress, skin, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of very nice contrasts. It's all done very well. The lighting is very good. The exposure is very good. The, it, it all works from the perspective of the black and white and um, the dark and the light and the, the in-betweens. The title throws me off a little bit. It's called Fear, and I'm not sure that I'm seeing fear. I, I would say that certainly there is an uneasiness about this photo, or the photo evokes a, a sense of unease for me. 
but I don't know the fear is where I would go with it. I see perhaps um, like getting caught doing something you weren't supposed to be doing or being seen when you thought you weren't going to be seen or maybe even anger. Um, but the fear is, is simply not coming through to me. And that's only a problem insofar as what I'm getting from the photo doesn't match the title of it. Um, doesn't go beyond that. So some of the other things about the photo that strike me, and I, I just don't know what kind of an effect they're having on me, it's um, there's a kind of a claustrophobic feeling that comes from the subject being so close to the end of the frame here. Typically, because the subject is more or less looking toward, certainly more toward the left than the right, I would be suggesting that the subject be more in the, the right third of the frame than the left to allow for space. But perhaps this, this sense of um, claustrophobia, of being trapped perhaps, is part of the goal of creating a sense of fear with the image. I don't see much else in the photo that really helps me understand what's going on here. And again, maybe that's part of the plan. Maybe it's what's unknown and left to the imagination that is thought to contribute to the feeling that's evoked by the image. Certainly something is happening here. There's a moment that's captured that makes me curious about what happened just before this and what's going to happen next. So in that sense, it's a very successful photo. And it's difficult for me to really say more about it. Again, I'll say that uh, exposure is perfect. The black and white is beautiful. The makeup is very well done. And you have succeeded absolutely in evoking feeling with this image. So um, it's been fun to look at and think about and continue to some extent to be perplexed and that I just can't quite put my finger on exactly what, uh, what I'm getting from this photo, but I am getting something very real. The last photo for critique <clears throat> was submitted by Nikki De Conte, De Corte, sorry, who uh, also submitted the "I Am Cute" photo that um, I was looking at earlier. And I want to read what Nikki has said about this photo because it's all relevant. On my way back from a photo shoot, I noticed a field with donkeys in it. I love these creatures; they are so photogenic. As I approached, I noticed this little guy who apparently had had a very exhausting day and needed a fellow donkey to keep his head up. He was in the shade of the field at the end of the afternoon and I did not have flash with me. I set my aperture to 2.8 to blur out as much of the background as possible while I adjusted my shutter speed to 1500 for a correct exposure of the donkey. The background would be overexposed, but that did not matter. ISO was on 320, my favorite go-to value on sunny winter days like these. I had to do some work in post-processing to get some detail back in the background and to add some light in the shadow parts of the shot. Thanks to the 2.8 aperture and my large 7200 lens on the Canon 5D2 body, I was able to make the barbed wire in front of the body of the supporting act donkey disappear and cropped the image so that it only showed what was essential. So I'm going to leave that. Well, you might not. So I look at this photo and I say, uh, well, I, I tip my hat to Nikki because I think every decision you made with this photo was spot on. And this is just a wonderful, adorable, cute, uh, just a great photograph. And the fact that you had the vision to um, imagine what you would get when you took the photo to make the adjustments to shoot a 2.8 to blow out the background to recognize that exposing for the face of the donkey was going to overexpose the background and not worry about that, to um, use the aperture that was required to, to get rid of, in a sense, the barbed wire, to crop, to provide us with only what we need to see. Every one of those decisions and your post-processing to bring back some of the dark, which I'm, I'm guessing probably here would have been among the darkest here. And so you said you also brought back some of the background Every decision that you made was a very good decision, and this is a great photo. And I could offer the suggestion of, well, don't bullseye your subject, you know, rule of thirds, bring the eyes up to here, and um, don't put it right in the center, either horizontally or vertically. But you know what? It works just as it is. Uh, show us more of the 
support donkey here, but I don't need to see more of the support donkey. I, I just think that this is a great photo. And um, again, I tip my hat to you for seeing the potential, stopping, doing, doing what you needed to do, and bringing to fruition the vision that you had. And thank you for sharing this. And Nikki, since I have you here and have your attention perhaps, I want to go back because um, since the time I recorded my critique of your other image, it occurred to me, another comment I wanted to make here is that you, you talked about how you know, you're at the top of the Empire State Building and you're looking for something special and you're taking your time and you're walking around. And, and what I finally thought was that there isn't anything about this photo that lets me know where you are. The fact that you're at the top of the Empire State Building would be great to somehow represent in the photo, particularly if you're trying to take advantage of your location, as you did with that wonderful photo of the donkey, even though it, it happened by chance. So in addition to everything I've already said about this photo, I think that um, it's unfortunate that there isn't anything to let the viewer know where the photo was taken. That would, that would really be kind of a, an important element, maybe a bonus, but certainly important. All right, so that's it for my critiques. Thanks to all who submitted photos and uh, hope to see you all in my sports photography class at some point.